find that. That's not sketchy at all. All right, welcome back to part two of the BTR battery series. Now in part one, we took apart the BTR Power uh, 48 volt, 35 amp hour battery pack and looked at some of its components, saw some shortcomings, saw some good things. Uh, but today we're going to be testing it. So the two things we're gonna test in particular are the ability of the BMS to adequately and appropriately charge this battery pack um, keeping the cells balanced and, and whatnot. And also we're going to be putting it under a constant load with this 2000 watt electric motor, seeing how well that BMS monitors the discharge. So that's what's coming up. Let's get right to it. So step one is gonna be disassembling the whole pack. Um, they were soldered together. So I'm using a solder pen to melt that solder line and get them all separated onto the board. All right, now that each pack is separated, and just so you know, each pack is a LG P34. I couldn't find a whole lot about these online. If anybody knows about them, let me know. So let's get them all wired up to the BMS and start the discharging and charging testing. And here we go. Let's do a walk around. Okay, we have every cell hooked up in series. So this makes a 13 cell battery and we got the BMS hooked up as well. Let's test to make sure all these are in the correct spot. So as you can see I have the multimeter here. We're going to go through each voltage on each balance of the wire. The positive end is hooked up to the positive side of the first battery and then we'll go through each one succinctly and it should each add up by around 4 volts. Um, now one thing that's a little strange about this BMS setup is that there's 13 balance wires. Um, usually there's 14, no one more than the amount of cells because that lastly goes to the battery's main negative. But with this BMS, for whatever reason, um, there is no lead for that last uh, negative terminal on the, on the last battery. So we can get all the way up to the last and then to test the total voltage, we'd have to go to the main um, negative lead. I'm not sure if that's an issue with the BMS I don't know enough about battery management systems to really determine that, but this is the exact way that it was connected before I took the battery apart. So let's go through each one and test the voltage and make sure that everything is connected properly. As you can see, it's this is a this is a hasty job. No, for what it is, I'm not trying to put this in a machine and try to run it all day. So things are um, compression connected and some soldering. So this not meant to be a working model this is just for testing purposes only so let's go ahead and get started here so going dc my positive terminals to the positive of the battery and you can barely see it here but the the first balance wire that goes to the positive end of the main battery is connected so if i were to touch that nothing should show up here which it doesn't so let's go to the first 3.78 all right second 7.7, .7, looking good. 11.76, all right. And we're moving up by about those four volt increments. I think each battery right now is around 3.9 volts. So we're getting a roughly four volt addition each time. But this lets me know that everything's correct, correctly connected and we can start going with the, uh, the charging and the discharging. good 43 and the last one 47.6 now what I'm going to do to test the very last is go ahead and connect to the main negative 50, about 52 volts so that lets us know everything is connected properly to the BMS um, through the lead wire or through the balance wires and we can go ahead and connect the BMS now and begin our charging and discharging testing one thing I do want to point out about this BMS and balance wire setup is you'll see, if we get real close here, that the BMS has up to 16 ports and the, or the, the lead or the balance uh, connector here has up to 16 ports. 
And then when you look at the BMS itself, it says up to battery 16. So this BMS can actually handle more cells. Um, and I know you can use a higher cell count BMS to charge a lower cell count battery if you hook them up correctly. Um, so as you can see here, there is a bridged part of the BMS between a couple cells, and then there is a gap here, and then a missing lead here. So we have 16, or we have 13 balance wires. Typically there's 14. It may just be a different setup with how the battery main terminal connects. Um, like I said, don't know enough about the battery system to understand that completely, but it seems that this is just simply the way it was shipped to me after taking it apart and then point reassembling it the, pro the way it was came. So uh, getting back to that, it looks like there was some adjustments made to the BMS and uh, that's how they're making this all work. So for each cell, we're gonna test first the voltage across each cell. I'm gonna keep track of this as we charge and discharge. So, and, and also along with the, the temperature of the batteries. So to help us visualize the results, I put the voltage points into a graph. Um, you will see that there is one pack that the voltage remained outside the others and I think that pack is faulty. It didn't really charge very well, um, so that's something to keep in mind. So going on to the graph that excludes that outlier, uh, you'll see that as the BMS is charging the packs, they get closer and closer in voltage, so the balancing effect is working correctly. Um, I think a key point with this is at that four hour mark, I disattach the charger and let the battery pack sit overnight and as you can see, the BMS continued to balance each of those battery packs. So the voltage progressively gets closer and closer. So that's a really good finding with this BMS. It is charging appropriately in a balancing manner. Um, on a side note, the temperature of any of the, all the packs uh, never rose more than a degree uh, throughout the whole process. Okay, so I've run into some problems with the discharging with a low aspect of this battery experiment. Um, what I've tried so far as an external load is using my speed controller with the 2000 watt motor. That speed controller is supposed to handle 35, 34 amps um, and 48 volts, which is the same one I use with the same pack for the scooter build. Um, for whatever reason, that is not working right now. Uh, I think something within that speed controller is blown. I can hear clicking coming from the speed controller itself. Um, I'm not an expert on electronics. Uh, I've opened it up and I just, I can't see anything that's wrong with it. Um, I've tried rewiring it and that just still hasn't worked. So what I did secondly to that is got a cheap um, speed controller off Amazon. You've probably seen these. This one is supposed to be able to handle up to 70 volts and 30 amps. Uh, I was hoping I could use that as a slow discharge um, around that 15 amp or 10 to 15 amp uh, range for the battery pack, but every time I connect it, um, it blows a fuse. Uh, I've tried a couple things to get through this. I've tried uh, XT90 with anti-spark connections. I've tried um, using this speed controller with individual packs to kind of take that initial punch out of the pack. Um, and I've also tried, which wasn't a good thing, just to hook up straight um, uh, positive negative to the to the uh, actual motor and that of course just big arc and that really didn't work well so i'm kind of at a stalemate here because i don't want to invest more money into a speed controller that can handle the amps or replace my scooter speed controller because i'm i'm done with that for now um, i also don't want to leave this on my workbench anymore having all these wires out uh, is just a big fire risk um, and also leaving some of these packs that, as we know from previous in the video or the first part one, are a little questionable. So this is essentially where I'm going to have to end the video. Unfortunately, I am unable to find out if this BMS keeps the packs balanced as it discharges. Um, we know how the charging works, so that at least is a benefit. Um, but yeah, this is just where I'm going to have to end it. I'm kind of upset about that. I'm sorry if you are, um, but this is just the way it's going to be. The future of these packs, um, I do plan on reassembling them into six cell arrangements and using them with balance leads on an external balancing charger. Uh, that will be my energy source for some future builds, including what will be coming up next, which is an electric powered surfboard. Um, those will become really popular and I just want to get my hands into one of those. 
so that will be in the future, but uh, this is the end of the whole pack assessment and testing. Um, it's just not worth the money or the risk um, of fire leaving this out, and uh, I'm just going to have to end it here. So I hope you've enjoyed some of the things we found out about this pack. Um, if you haven't watched part one, part one's a disassembly, so that uh, shows a lot about the build of the pack. Um, but anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed at least some of this. Um, I'm sorry again that we didn't get to the testing phase of the discharge, but I, I'm just kind of at uh, my wit's end as far as getting a speed controller that's within reason price-wise to work for me. So I'm just gonna have to call it an end here. Um, sorry, just that's how it's gonna be. Um, but anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for future builds. I do have some fun stuff coming up, and uh, have a great day.